And I'm just curious, just in terms of perhaps the most compelling pieces of evidence that we have in terms of the earliest life on Earth, just in terms of maybe fossils, chemical signatures, geological formations. What what things provide the um, the strongest support for, for early life and perhaps what do they also reveal about the conditions of life on Earth at that time? Again, that's a good question. And here's where something I said earlier comes to the fore. And that is, as we go backward in time, the record that we can look at gets smaller and smaller. So at three and a half billion years old, where there are some well-preserved sedimentary rocks in both Southern Africa and in Australia, and those have chemical evidence that is strongly suggestive of a biological carbon cycle and a biological sulfur cycle. There are structures called stromatolites that would still form today in some places. And these are structures that form when microbial communities on the surface of sediments interact with physical processes and build up these three-dimensional structures that are pretty much diagnostically biological. And there are stromatolites in three and a half billion year old limestones. Um, whether or not there are unambiguous microfossils that old is a little contentious. There are certainly unambiguous microfossils that go back to 3.1 or 3.2 billion years. Uh, but most of the rocks at 3.5 billion years old have you know, had enough contact with things like percolating hydrothermal fluids that that record if it existed has been erased. So basically, I think most of us are happy with the idea that life existed uh, three and a half billion years ago. If you look at the chemical evidence for a, a biological carbon cycle, there are some metamorphic rocks that go back to about 3.9 billion years old that are again, consistent with uh, a carbon-based living system. So what we can really say is that we, in some ways we run out of rocks before we run out of evidence for life. Um, but the one thing that that tells us is that life began on a planet that was something of a water world. Uh, there were volcan volcanoes and maybe some little nuclei of continents that stuck out above the oceans. But you know, if you had flown a satellite around the earth three and a half billion years ago, it would have been mostly water with, with volcanoes and a little bit of a little bit of continents. We also know, and this is this is key, there was no oxygen in the atmosphere hmm. or oceans, like no oxygen gas. Um, and all the experimental literature on the origins of life is consistent in saying only in the absence of molecular oxygen could the chemistry that gave rise to life happen. So interestingly, I, I think what that tells us is that long ago on a planet that was physically somewhat different from today's, conditions were right that life could begin through plate tectonics and other processes, it has been sustained. And through time, the planet itself has changed markedly. I mean, you and I would last about three minutes in the absence of oxygen, and yet life could not have started in the presence of oxygen. So the, the planet has changed in many different ways, sometimes through biological drivers. The oxygen that we breathe comes from photosynthesis sometimes through physical processes and commonly through the interactions of biological and physical processes. And just perhaps one thing that we could clarify by, by here, you know, obviously when we're talking about uh, life forms three and a half billion years ago, we're not talking about cavemen walking around. We're not talking about people <laughs> like you or I strolling around. Could we perhaps just clarify there what, what, what we're talking about when we're talking about life three? Yeah, life no, it, it, it's important to know that uh, you and I are evolutionary latecomers. In, in fact, you know, for much of my life, I did field work on ancient rocks and trying to, to use fossils and chemistry to reconstruct the early earth. And everyone always told me I was working on early life. And I kept pointing out that I said, no, actually, I'm 
talking about 85% of the history of life. You know, animals as a whole only come on the last 15% of recorded Earth's history. Before that, life was mainly microbial. So at three and a half billion years ago, uh, I would think in terms of bacteria, uh, we think that there was photosynthesis at that time, at least of some sort. Uh, if you look to see where photosynthesis occurs today, mostly bacteria, and you know, you say, well, but what about trees? But it, the interesting thing about photosynthesis in a plant is that the chloroplast, which is the little organelle that does photosynthesis, actually originated as a free living photosynthetic bacterium that, you know, well over a billion years ago was captured by a host and reduced to metabolic slavery. So in a sense, think about a bacterial world, not only three and a half billion years ago, but for most of earth history. In fact, I once wrote, and people either love or hate this statement, but it's that, um, you know, in some ways, Plants and animals are the icing on evolution's cake, but bacteria are the cake. Yeah. Because yeah. you could not have functioning ecosystems without bacteria to cycle not only carbon, but sulfur and nitrogen, iron, you name it. Uh, you know, from, from that kind of metabolic perspective, animals are pretty dull. <laughs>